For most of his life, Cookie had never seen his father out of tailored suits. To be seen in anything but the height of fashion would be nothing more than dishonourable to the family name. Sure, they weren't related to those Kennedys. But as a Kennedy, Ryan Kennedy had been raised the right way. There was a reason he had no fashion sense other than button-down shirts and khakis. So when he was sitting down at dinner, five minutes early, as is proper, he had to force down his shock as he saw his father, a slightly balding man past his prime and with just enough paunch to be seen as a beer gut instead of a healthy weight, walk in with what looked like honest-to-god chainmail under his tailor suit coat and a leather vest that looked like something out of Dark Souls. It was only military training and 17 years of living with these people kept the shock from showing on his face. And then his mother walked in wearing something that came out of The Witcher. Suit pants creased harshly enough to slice bread, and what looked like a faux brass corset over a purple blouse. A single, almost pauldron-like accessory sat on her right shoulder, with the symbol of the Chauvanti Imperium etched onto the metal. As she moved to sit down, Cookie could tell that the metal wasn't a solid piece, but instead probably some fancy perv material science creating a fabric that shimmered and looked like brass. At this, he could only score himself to raise an eyebrow. The ex-pilot himself only wore plain khakis, dress shoes, and a white button-down shirt. A pair of worn aviators sat in his breast pocket, relics from his time in the air, and the flight jacket his wing brought one week on leave. The patch with his naval aviation wings had been sadly absent from the beautiful coat for years. Ah, uh, I see you've re-evaluated your fashion choices, he begins, trying to snap his eyes from each stranger fashion choice to instead look at his mother and father in their eyes. Ah, yes, his mother began. As the new order was settled in, we believed it was time to update our choices to more fit what they expect. For a smoother transition of power, of course, and for the good of the family name. That explained the Imperium flag flying where Old Glory used to proudly sit, Cookie thought sardonically. So, this was the ending choice? He asked out loud. It seems odd. I don't believe I've seen anything like it outside of propaganda pieces I see occasionally. <clears throat> Your mother and I have been informed from a good source that such clothing is considered high fashion in the Imperium. We merely added a human touch to it. We have encouraged others in our group to adopt the same. We have already been approached with positions on the regional council due to our efforts, Cookie's father stated proudly. No matter what, our family name will be remembered. As traitors. Cookie thought. I have something to say as well, then. I have made the decision to join the Imperial's patrol. I'm shipping out to training at the end of the week. To anyone else, the announcement was met with no reaction. But to someone who had grown up reading the micro-expressions in these people's faces, and who had made a name for himself recognising the round bills of jets at distances of kilometres, it was like the pair had dropped their jaws in shock. He barely suppressed a smile, and they knew it. Are you? I mean, of course. I am glad you are doing your part of further the Kennedy name. It is good you have joined us in embracing the Imperium. We shall be a guiding light for those less fortunate to not follow in our path as quickly. In fact, we gave our support for furthering Shulvanti control over the healthcare system just this week, his mother said before she and his father began explaining just how accomplished they were being, and how it would be so much nicer if their eldest son would get involved. Less fortunate, Cookie scoffed. How quickly your tune changed. A couple of years ago when you were all for repealing Acker. Cookie chewed them out, letting them brag as he ate his food. After the invasion, beef had become a touch rarer due to the fact that most farmland was in rebel control, but somehow his parents had found a way to acquire some grade A steak. Wonder how much it costs to get this. Probably could feed a whole bunch of folks with this. The Chauvanti, during their work at rebuilding and, in some cases, building infrastructure, had set up a robust chain of food banks and soup kitchens around the world. Food was no better than army rations, but it was free, filling and nutritious. Some regions had even contacted rebel groups and got these places designated safe zones where anyone could get shelter, food and medical aid. Cookie worked at one, hauling crates a couple years ago, because the pension he got from the Shulvanti, because of the 773 Liberating Officer was running a bit thin, and he was not willing to get a loan from his parents. 
that's just inviting them back into his life. And when he left for the Naval Academy at 17, he only appeared at dinner to say goodbye. He watched silently as they prattled on about their latest accomplishments, how they were friends with What's-His-Name, how they courted favour with What's-Her-Face, how they sold out someone with rebellious thoughts to the interior. It took everything in his body to not stand up and leave at that. Cookie was never one for revolution for old America. It lost the war, and he accepted that. But he was firmly neutral in this stance. He wouldn't help the rebels, but he sure as hell won't be helping the interior. The body buried in limestone in the ruins of a parking garage proved that point quite well. 773 wasn't anything to brag about.